Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and today we're going to check out Overly Sarcastic Productions Journey to the West Part 5. Now, last time around, every time around apparently, Tripitaka got captured because people want immortality who are demons. It didn't work. Someone may or may not have believed Goku slash Wukong slash Monkey, and then he saved the day. More importantly, we're just going to move on and see who captures Tripitaka this time, because it's, uh, good to go, I guess. Probably going to happen. I've heard this one's good, though. So yeah, you guys know the deal. There's a link below to the original video. It's overly sarcastic productions. I've only seen red stuff so far, but I've been hearing a lot of good things about doing Pope Fight next. And I'm not sure if I'm getting close to the end of the series or not. I heard they do it once a year, and they've been doing this for a long time. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm looking at next. I just like all their shit so far. But yeah, we're going to check it out. Otherwise, again, link below. Hit it up. Let's get started. Last time on Journey to the West, the I, uh, famous red boy abducted Tripitaka and again. previously wounded the indomitable monkey Which king with his ultimate newer. weapon, the true fire of Samadhi. Injured and weak, but determined to retrieve his master, Sun Wukong petitioned the merciful Quan Yin for her aid, and the two of them hatched a plan to deceive the precocious monster. Merciful. I mean, yeah. In the older sense of I'll make it fast, she is not merciful. She really dragged that out and she did keep him alive to serve him. Or serve her. Yeah, no, not mercy. Not mercy. <laughs> By way of illusions and an arsenal of blades, the divine duo defeated the demon, and Tripitaka was once more restored to his place in the journey to the west. Ah, uh, yes, the so human MacGuffin. Are trekking westward as they have been for quite some time now, and morale is honestly running a little low. Tripitaka is getting homesick, and Pigsy laments that it feels like they'll be on. How many mountains can there be? Actually, considering China does encompass a good portion of mountainous territory, there actually is probably a lot. I have no idea what the bounds of the Chinese Empire, though. Or the area that would become the Chinese empires would encompass at this point. As long as the past that I know that it changed, I don't know when it changed or how big. So it might actually be quite a lot. On this journey forever. <laughs> but just as monkeys telling them to quit. Oh yeah, because she's been writing this for over a decade and doing these videos for over a decade. She's still doing them now. Oh, uh, that, I just, I, I want to see that again. That actually, it's just a you little shout out I absolutely forever. love. <laughs> <laughs> also, yeah, her animation style just for herself changed a lot since that first video. Just as monkeys Bigger telling lines, to quit too. whining because they'll get there when they get there, they bump into a huge, turbulent, and totally pitch black river in their way. While they're nope. discussing how to get across, they spot a boatman nearby and Hello, ask him to Chiron. ferry them across. But the boat's too small to accommodate Sorry, a monk, three semi-celestial monsters, and a I guess we can take several trips. We also need to bring this chicken... This fox and a bag of assorted grains. <laughs> okay, I recognize that. That did that actually? I've heard of the folk tale about taking the chicken, the grain, and the fox across the river, but did that actually happen in Journey to the West, or is that just a joke she threw in there? Normally, I would say it's a joke, but a lot of the things she's referencing turn out not to be jokes. She just plays them off as jokes. So there's always a chance that maybe it was in this i honestly have no idea and i'm kind of curious to find out an entire horse so they split up into two groups tripitaka and pigsy to be ferried across first sandy and the, the horse flying next, horse and monkey can just jump across so it's we're actually acknowledging that we're actually acknowledging that that is literally not an impediment to him but the horse who also flies walks sorry is taking the boat you know the horse is lazy enough that actually makes perfect sense not really an issue. But when Tripitaka and Pigsy are halfway across the river, the boatman reveals himself to be a bad guy, summoning a whirlwind and sinking the boat. Sam Damn. panics and says they should look downstream to see if they've washed up. Hey, hey, I make the impulsive decisions around here. Wait, is he actually holding back Sandy? You know what? Considering Sandy swims, that actually is not even an impulsive decision. On the shore, but Monkey points out that Pigsy's a good swimmer. If it were a normal capsizing, he should have been able to get himself and Tripitaka to safety, no problem. So Sandy strips down to dive in, but Monkey warns. Look, I'm just saying, this water looks real evil. I mean, considering you can shape change to be so big, you can reach down there. Just throwing it out there. You've even used it before, as in the last episode. Just throwing it out there. Also, Pigsy being a good swimmer. Eh, no, okay, sure, that makes sense. I mean, Celestial, why not? So the black water looks real suspicious, but Sandy points out he lived in a river way eviler than this one and heads in no problem. Oh yeah, he was a river demon. of the river bottom reveals a huge pavilion advertised as the home of the black river god, and Sandy overhears the definitely not a real boatman monologuing about how he's going to invite his uncle over so they can eat Tripitaka and become immortal. Sandy becomes enraged and bangs on the door, demanding Tripitaka's return. They go into stock in the water, I guess. Okay. And the demon comes out to see what all the fuss is about. He literally said, what about the pig? And I, I miss what Sandy said. 
Release the monk or else. Door, demanding Tripitaka's return. And Pigsy too, I guess. He's negotiable. Comes out to see what all the fuss Ooh, is about. Beard. The demon's all decked out in gold and jewels and is instantly down to fight. He and Sandy battle at the bottom of the river for a good 30 rounds before Sandy realizes they're at an impasse and turns to run, hoping to lure the demon out know, of the water so monkey can finish him off. But the demon's got more pressing matters to attend, namely drafting up an invite for his uncles. How come the enemies are actually reasonably smart and let people get out without following them to obvious traps? It's not even a trope yet and they've actually avoided it. Considering this is the book that apparently started most tropes. Kind of surprising, actually. Well, so he doesn't follow him to the surface. As Sandy and Monkey discuss what to do. Well, I can't beat him, and I can't fight underwater. But he won't come to the surface. I mean, just a uh, shape-shifting, maybe just a giant monkey with a giant shape-shifting pole and is out there. Time to go fishing. Spear fishing. Actually, why aren't they doing that? You know, I thought spearfishing was something that existed for most of human history, but I'm not actually sure if it existed in this area. Maybe they just moved on to nets and they work better. I don't actually know. Mostly because I know nothing about fishing and the thought of it actively causing me pain and physical discomfort. No. Just, just no to fishing. Ugh, all that waiting. All that sitting. All that doing nothing. Ugh. To do, a mysterious old man suddenly appears and introduces himself river. as the Black River God. He quickly clarifies that he's not the demon that abducted Tripitaka, he's the true god of this river. But several months ago, they this demon out? stormed in from the Western Ocean, kicked him out of his house, and set up shop in his fancy pavilion. When he filed. Wait, Western Ocean? Whoop, that's Ao oh, Jun's nephew. Sorry, hands are tied. Really? Yeah, because Chinese heaven is a bureaucracy and it's treated like a bureaucracy even in fiction. Yeah, or I guess it wouldn't be Chinese heaven. It would be more like, was it Confucian heaven? I could be mistaken on which branch it is. Filed an official complaint, he discovered that the demon's uncle is Ao Shun, the dragon king of the West, and thanks to nepotism, there's nothing he can do. He's such a small-time god, the Jade Emperor will never listen to him, so he's hoping maybe Monkey will be willing to take matter. I hear that circumventing authority is your thing. Ah, yes. Nepotism. Gotta love how heaven is actually more corrupt than everywhere else in this book. And considering this was literally a, hey, this is why Buddhism is awesome book, that makes sense that it's portrayed that way. Perfectly, it makes sense, actually. Matters into his own hands and do a little vigilante justice? Also, Monkey's considering like, nepotism a dragon in government king? In this time Oh, I've threatened all those guys before. BRB, I'll sort this out. And blasts off to the Western Ocean. He intercepts the messenger carrying the invitation to come eat Tripitaka, then marches up to the palace to have a little chat with the Western Dragon King. But while Monkey was ex how many times has this specific god... Because I'm pretty sure he's gone to the Western Dragon God a few times now. Yes, you and the nephew are bonding over dinner nowadays. God, also, was that a, just a... It's just a random fish that he killed by squelching it. Splork. <laughs> yeah, okay. That, that one got me. ...to come eat Tripitaka, then marches up to the palace to have a little chat with the tea Western underwater, Dragon. Though. But while Monkey was expecting to have to throw some weight around or threaten the guy, as soon as the dragon sees the invite, he freaks out. See, the demon is his sister's ninth son and didn't have anywhere else to go, so the Dragon King advised... Ah. The other half of nepotism. Promote someone until they can't fuck it up and then find out they can still fuck it up. It's time you got a job. Ugh. Get an internship at the Black River. Uh, they even drew him in a sweats, in a robe, in a video game console leaning back. Wow, I just realized this describes me. If my beard was longer, I would actually be that guy right now. Oh, that is uncomfortably accurate. Asked him to travel to the Black River and train himself so he could be ready to take on some official position in the bureaucracy later. He had no idea his nephew attacked the River God, and he certainly doesn't condone eating. Oh no, this is a disaster. Okay, calm down. This happens all the time. I love that she has freaking monkey being the voice of reason here. <laughs> yes, okay, no, no, that's fine. You don't have to go off. We deal with people who want to eat him all the time. It actually has happened almost every time. Now that I think about it. Almost every time. Hell, the only time I did it is when they were really just meeting Sandy and Pixie the first time around. They didn't want to eat him. They just may or may not have killed him and the horse. The horse would have just killed him, but it's lazy. Yeah. Buddhists. The dragon calls up his son, Moang, and sends him off with an army to apprehend his cousin. So Moang and Monkey head back to the oh. river, and Moang tells Monkey... It feels so weird that to not be carrying the team, I'm sure it won't last. <laughs> 
Monkey, he'll take care of the demon so Monkey can just relax for a bit. Monkey and Sandy chill on the banks while Moang dives nice. down to confront the demon. Does Moang and the demon argue about how much trouble he's in. Do you have any idea who you just pissed off? Whatever, bro. Why can't you support my choices? Your choices are stupid. The demon hasn't actually seen Monkey and doesn't realize how dangerous this group he's been antagonizing is, while Moang knows all about Monkey and the kind of damage he can do. Inevitably, the two of them fight, and Moang fakes out the demon before KOing him and taking him prison. Moang leads Monkey through the pavilion to retrieve Tripitaka and Pig. Wait, it actually worked? It actually worked? Huh. I was not expecting that. Also, yeah, now that I see it, her style did change a lot. She's using much thicker, more curved lines than she previously did. I guess over the years that does change it. They look very like clean, very in shape, but it's very, very thick by comparison. It's really only visible and noticeable when you think about the actual dialogue text she puts in. Thank you all so much, according to the river god who was literally just ignored. Oh, wow. Pigsy, the Black River God, is restored to his rightful place, and as thanks, he parts the waters so the gang can... All right, Moses. Wrestling. And they do for a while, but as the crew makes their way, they suddenly hear this horrible sound, like hundreds of people screaming at the same time. What? While the rest of the gang debates what might have made the noise, Monkey flies up to see if he can spot it. Instead, he sees a beautiful city in the distance, and a small crew of very ragged-looking monks trying to pull a cart full of rocks up a hill near the gates. Huh? The monks are responsible for the noise, as they're all yelling in unison as they pull. Two Taoists come out of the city, and the monks all look terrified and start pulling harder, and Monkey he realizes he's heard of this city. It must be the Slow Cart Kingdom, a place where Taoists are revered with the highest honors and Buddhism is hated to the point of being criminalized. So Remember what I mentioned earlier and the show has previously pointed out about how there's three various religions represented here? Take a wild guess which one's the victim and which one's being represented. <laughs> Clue here, both of them. Both are the same. It's very much a, hey, check it out, fellow Buddhists. I'm a cool kid now. Hello, fellow Taoist. Oh, oh, it's pronounced Taoist and spelled Taoist. Oh, maybe that's just an English translation thing. Anywhere I can be pious and humble. Nowhere, nowhere, dude. That, that's nowhere actually does that. They all said no one does. So Monkey disguises himself as a Taoist sage and pops down to chat up the Taoists and get a little info on this place. When he introduces himself and asks if there's a good spot in the city for him to beg some vegetarian food like the good Taoist he is, the Taoists laugh and tell him that in this case- Humility, remember when we had to beg? Wait, they were intentionally told to beg prior? Kingdom, the king himself is devoted to the Tao, and there will be no need for him to beg. It'd be an honor for the citizens to give him food. They tell Monkey that 20 years ago, the kingdom was ravaged by a terrible drought, and no amount of Buddhist prayer seemed to help. But then, just when things seemed hopeless, three Taoist immortals called Tiger Strength Immortal, Deer Strength Immortal, and Goat Strength Immortal descended from the sky, summoned the rain, and fixed. I love how they're just progressively looking less sure. It's like, uh, uh, uh. Also, really just. Tiger, goat, and deer strength immortal? It's definitely a Chinese naming convention. Yeah, it would probably sound different in Chinese. Also, like, they're all looking around and he's like, oh, what? Hmm? I'm assuming uh, the thing is, and if it's going by anything previously, uh, they are not immortals. They are demons. They're going to try and eat Tripitaka. And they were the ones causing the drought, so they probably fixed it by undoing it. Just calling it now. Just, just throwing it out there. The drought. The court retaliated against the Buddhists by demolishing their temples and Damn. enslaving all the monks, which is why the Buddhist monks are on rock pulling duty while the Taoists are living large. So monkeys that is like, good. Oh, gosh, that's just horrible. I came to this city because a relative of mine became a Buddhist monk here. And the Taoists tell him that out of respect as a fellow Taoist, they'll let him take his relative if he's one of the monks they have. So monkey sidles over to the monk. On the one hand, they'll set someone free. On the other hand, wow, that is dickish to get their side of the story, though not before laughing at them for being lousy Buddhists. Real nice, monkey. Anyway, the monks tearfully explain yeah. that not only did the Taoists enslave all the monks in the city, well. they enslave any monks that travel to the city, which will obviously be a problem for Tripitaka. Apparently, the Taoist immortals won the king over by arranging the construction of a temple where they can read scriptures and stuff that'll ensure the king lives for 10,000 years, and the king liked the idea so much that he lets them do whatever they want. Monkey. I'm not sure which is more annoying. That it's such an obvious ploy, or that it's a, such an obvious, believable ploy that would still technically work now. 
Kaki asks why the monks don't trope. just run away, and they explain that their faces are posted in every province in the kingdom as a preemptive measure to How keep them the in kingdom? prison. They say even though their lives are hopeless and they'd rather die than keep living like this, they keep getting saved from death and visited in their dreams by a whole bunch of gods, telling them to stay alive because the great Tang monk is coming to save them and he's bringing the great sage equal to heaven. So <laughs> They literally... <laughs> I love that he freaked out. It's like, oh shit, that's me. He's literally figuring out. Oh, they know we're coming this way because they have a preordained path that we're gonna follow. Because they literally told us to follow this path. It's like, hey, remember how everyone else was asked to help out? Yeah, you're gonna help a few people along the way as well. Oh my god. The monkey heads back over to the Taoists and is all like, you know, it's the darndest thing. I'm actually related to all of these monks. So me and my cousins are just gonna go. And the Taoists obviously kick up a fuss, so monkey gets cranky and kills them. The monks all freak out because they're gonna get blamed for the deaths, and monkey's like, would you guys relax? I'm the great sage. And the monks are like, no, you're not. The gold star of Venus told us that the great sage is all ugly and hairy with scary fangs and stuff. And monkey's like, that mother... <laughs> I hope that's actually how they put it, because that is literally hilarious. I mean, also, I can see why he would think Monkey's scary, because he was on the receiving end of the ass-kicking. And I mean, maybe not physically. I don't think he was one who actually fought. But he was on the team. Oh, God, oh, God, please don't kill me. And yes, that is what I'm going to call everyone who's not Monkey, or technically Tripitaka at this point. Or Quan Yin, because even though she didn't actually beat him... Yeah, she's probably one of the few people he probably knows better than a piss off because she might not be able to beat him, but she can make it wish that he could beat her. And he probably wouldn't at this point, so it really gets rid of a lot of issues. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> you got me. I'm not the Monkey King. I just work for him, and he's right behind you! So all the monks turn to look, and Monkey changes back and scares him. Surprise. I'm not joking. I love this book. So Monkey eats the card away and tells all the monks... He just yeeted the card. Okay, now you're gonna get out of here. Yeet. He even wrote yeet. I think that's why. There's an S. Seat doesn't work nearly as well. ...to scatter until they get word that the kingdom is safe for them, and he gives all the monks magical protection in the form of one of his hairs. Each hair can train... All right, All Might. Just... Oh, my... I don't... I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. They don't have to eat it. I and I said it. Spirit for each individual monk, and with that sorted, most of the monks run off with their new magic bodyguards. Although about a dozen stay behind to help out Monkey in the game. Oh. But Tripitaka's gotten tired of waiting, and in his biggest act of agency yet, has come to find Monkey himself, and Monkey fills him Seriously? in on the situation. So the remaining monks sneak the gang into the last surviving monastery in the city and put them up for the night. But Monkey. I mean, to be completely fair, those monks sticking around, I'd say it's really brave, mostly because their savior is described as scary, and he just killed a bunch of people in front of them. So yeah, that'd be pretty brave. Also, going back to the kingdom that wants to enslave them and will probably kill them in revenge. That too, but also, Monkey's probably scarier because they have good reason to believe- Oh, no, no, no. He can just do this. Monkey's too stressed out to sleep, so he decides really? to investigate the giant Taoist temple the three immortals had built. He finds Redeemers. the three immortals and a huge number of young Taoists playing music and praying, and he also notices a ton of delicious-looking buns and food offerings and stuff. Remembering the age-old proverb, a single hand can- Good thing I'm such a diligent Buddhist. Oh my god. <laughs> not clap, Monkey decides that it'll be much more fun to wreck this place with company, so he goes to wake up Sandy and Pigsy and asks if they want to help him prank the Taoist and Also, I love how they're just making his eyes glow red at night, and Pigsy's admittedly freaked out right here. Sandy is just chill. Again, Sandy, best boy. Absolute best boy. Oh my god. Still surprised he has enough self-control to ask someone else to help. Steal their food. The gang whips up a whirlwind in the temple, and the yeah, Taoists say this is a sign to call it a night. To keep suspicion to a minimum, the trio transformed to resemble three statues in the temple, with Pigsy disposing of the originals down the nearest toilet. Suitably disguised. <laughs> they just transformed into them. And of course, Pigsy just gets the regular clothing instead of actual gold clothing. Oh my god. Guys, the gang digs in. Although Monkey isn't actually a huge fan of cooked food, being a monkey, so he just has some fruit and hangs out with his friends. Oh. oh, that's cute. But the party goes south when one of the young Taoists realizes he forgot his handbell and heads back into the hall, where he hears breathing, sees the place wrecked, freaks out and slips on a lychee seed, and Pigsy bursts out laughing. The Taoist runs away and returns with the three immortals, who see that the offerings have been eaten, but nobody's around. The immortals conclude that the strength of their- So this is a good opportunity to ask for some elixir or a little holy water. Smart, smart. 
And again, it's just a scam, obviously, but oh my god. Prayer must have brought the three pure ones down from heaven to take their offerings, and while they're here, they should ask for some golden elixir and holy water to give to the king. Monkey. Okay, never mind, they actually believe it. They're just idiots. Oh, sorry, we're all out of holy elixir and the sacred immortality mix because Monkey ate it, probably. <laughs> as the statue speaks up and tells the Taoists that they were indeed summoned by their super effective prayer, but they've just come from the Festival of Immortal Peaches and they don't have any elixir or holy water on them right now, but they can come back tomorrow? But the Taoists are very insistent, so Monkey says, Please, your pureness, we really want that elixir. Okay, okay, but you guys gotta leave. <sighs> They can get them some holy water, but they'll need a container, and the Taoists will need to leave the room. After some reshuffling, they're left alone with a big cistern, and Pigsy's confused about where they're supposed to get the holy water from. Please don't go, R. Kelly, on this. Please, please don't go that way. Oh, no. from until monkey starts peeing in it so the trio accumulate of course they went full r kelly on it god i don't and the, oh they drink it this holy water tastes like hog urine more like monkey it an impressive amount of holy water which the taoists admit doesn't taste very good and once they realize they've been bamboozled monkey grab okay time to go i just i don't I just... Uh, yeah, no, no, he deserves whatever's about to happen to him. That was horrible. Grabs Pigsy and Sandy and blasts through the doors, slipping back into the monastery undetected for a good night's sleep. The next day, Tripitaka goes to the king to have his travel papers recertified, and because this kingdom likes enslaving monks, Monkey and the gang go with him to make sure nothing goes wrong. The king immediately goes to toss Tripitaka in prison, but his advisor privately tells him that these monks are from a really far away kingdom, and to get here they must have gone through an absolute butt-ton of demons, so it's probably best not to mess with them, but just- Seriously, people being smart. Very surprising. Also, yeah, I would have loved to see how that had gone if, uh... <laughs> Actually, at this point, all three of them probably could have taken this guy. When it looks like this adventure might be over quickly, the three immortals swagger in and My order God. the guards to apprehend our heroes for wreaking mischief in the Taoist temple. And if they're actually going to acknowledge what they did specifically for the most important offense, um... Yeah, no, monkey, he earned, he earned that one. That's, uh, there's lines, man. There's lines. Murder? Pretty bad. Making someone drink your own piss? There's a reason I say don't go full R. Kelly. You just don't do that. The monkey says that that's ridiculous. They're new in town. They don't know anything about this city. So how on earth would they even know about the temple? And I mean, you honestly probably don't think you've done anything wrong. So this might actually be a statement of fact from you. The fact that you said we and include Pigsy in this even Tripitaka doesn't believe that. He's gullible as hell, and even he doesn't believe that. And even if they did, how could they have done any real damage without these three super powerful Taoist immortals stopping them? This confuses the king enough that he can't tell who's the bad guy in the situation, but just then a messenger arrives to... Sir, we need the immortals! I still expecting them to be a scam, but apparently they were actually praying, too. A little surprising. Inform the king that an outlying village is suffering from a drought, and they've requested help from the immortals. Hmm. The king has a bright idea and suggests they turn it into a competition. Whoever what? can make it rain is the winner and won't get in trouble. Monkey thinks this is a great idea, and the crew should... I'm sure competing amounts of water being dropped on a small village the with a drought is fine. Work. So Tiger Strength Immortal hops up on the podium and explains that he's going to strike his ritual tablet five times, and All his first four storm. strikes will summon the wind, clouds, lightning, and rain, while the fifth strike will dismiss the storm. So obviously, when Tiger Strength Immortal gets ready to do his thing, Monkey surreptitiously duplicates himself and vanishes into the clouds overhead to intercept whatever he does. With each strike on the tablet, the sage summons more and more minor gods, each with their own part to play in the creation of the storm. Oh, but as he soon as they was. run into Monkey, they freak out, he explains the situation, and they all agree to help him out instead. Huh. So on the one hand, the immortals actually are getting gods to listen to them. On the other hand, they know better than to not listen to Monkey first. So they're not charlatans, but I still think they probably could have just done exactly this, earned their position by making the gods give a drought instead, because apparently that's a thing that happens. Still thinking they're charlatans somehow, it just, it feels like it. Them listening to Monkey instead? Why, hello, ladies. I don't know if the ladies part is in there, but it really should be. 
dead. So, five strikes and exactly no rain later, Monkey pops back down, tells Tiger Strength the Mortal to embarrass dude. himself, and hops up on the podium. Monkey pulls a nervous Tripitaka up on the stage and tells him to fine. recite the Heart Sutra and he'll handle the rest. <laughs> Tripitaka begins, and Monkey signals the gods overhead, and they unleash a truly biblical storm. Gale force winds, sheets of rain, the world. Okay, this is actually an interesting reaction she drew, or drew here. Tiger and Goat, but I forgot his name. He's like, oh, cool. And these were actually surprised. That's a very distinct reaction here. I was expecting all three to have the same one, but this one's still just, oh, cool. Works. The king is thoroughly convinced, but the Taoists aren't done yet. They suggest that maybe the dragons they summoned were just late, and the storm was really their creation after. Dragons? They didn't summon. Oh, they, do they not know? Doesn't actually imply causation. Correlation is, I mean, technically he's not wrong. Most people ignore that. Wrong. So they successfully confuse the king again, but Monkey's like, Okay, well, tell you what. I haven't dismissed the dragons yet, so they're all chilling and visible overhead. If you guys can command one of them to appear, you can take the win. If not, I'll get him to show up, and we take the win. The king has never seen a dragon before and is very excited, and sure enough, the Taoists can't compel any of the dragons to show themselves, where it just takes a stern look from Monkey to get all four of them strutting their celestial stuff. But the yeah, good afternoon. Ah, okay. Yeah, no, that's completely justified. Also, the, they were in beseeching gods, thinking they were talking to dragons. Yeah, sure, why not? Dragons to show themselves, where it just takes a stern look from Monkey to get all four because of them. Because he can take all their houses and they know it. But the Taoists aren't willing to give up so easily, and they convince the king to let them do one more one competition more to determine who's actually cool. This one. One of you will sit perfectly still for as long as possible. Well, monkey's out. That's not going to happen. There's no way. The only time he was ever perfectly still was when he was unable to move because of a mountain put there by actual Buddha. <laughs> a meditation contest where each participant will fly to the top of a tower and then meditate for a predetermined amount of time. This is actually a problem. Monkey yeah. can do a lot of things. Seriously, you can jump over mountains. You still sit still or can't sit still. Sitting still is boring. Who does that? You, after 500 years, unwillingly. And even though I'm pretty sure you tried to move your head and wiggle around because there's no way you wouldn't use every way possible to scratch that nose. Yeah, and ironically, probably the smartest choice at that point. Things, but sitting still is not one of them. But Tripitaka can. During his monk huh? training, he recalls meditating for years at a time, so this competition should be a snap for him. Monkey flies him up disguised. Years at a time! How old is he? Why don't we do this all the time? Shh, focus. Also, someone finally asked. Someone finally asked. This is a cloud and Tripitaka and the goat strength immortal begin their meditation competition. But the deer strength immortal decides to cheat to help out his fellow Daoist oh. and summons a bed bug to bite Tripitaka. Monkey notices Tripitaka's distress and flies up to investigate, removes the bug, gives Tripitaka a couple scritches, then turns himself into a centipede and bites goat strength immortal on the face. Goat strength immortal flings himself off the tower in surprise and Tripitaka wins. But on the one hand, Monkey cheated. On the other hand, it was fair play at that point because the other person cheated first. If you thought the immortals were going to gracefully so lose, fast. think again. They have one more challenge for the crew. I'm sure it's only one. Perhaps one more test to confirm our superiority. Sounds fun. And the thing is, this is just a show for the king. It actually makes perfect sense. He's already proven to be indecisive as F. No, no, sorry, not indecisive. What's the other one? Feckless. That's the word. He's just swayed by whoever has shiny object and it does whatever they want. Oh my god this one a clairvoyance thing. They ask the king to put some precious trinket in a sealed lacquer box and have them take turns trying to predict what it is. The king agrees and has his wife put some fancy clothes in the box, oh. but Monkey turns into a tiny bug, sneaks into the box to take a peek, and transforms the clothes into really ratty bad clothes. The Taoists guess the fancy clothes, but with Monkey's guidance, Tripitaka guesses terrible clothes, and the king is just as shocked as the Taoists are to see the Tripitaka's right. They try a few more times, but Monkey just keeps faking them out, and finally in frustration, the immortals demand one final competition. <laughs> see, they're not called immortals for nothing what? they all know how to survive having their heads cut off their hearts removed or being boiled in oil so if the ow okay so they're actual immortals they actually are good at not dying but um why specifically the oil part is that is that actually you know it's fucked up enough and old enough i believe this is probably a common way to kill people at this time oh god why
The Buddhists can survive that, they'll accept the loss. Monkey is absolutely stoked at the opportunity to show off how indestructible he is, so he accepts the competition and demands to go first. The king has an execution site prepared, so they tie Monkey up and cut off his head. But there's no blood, and Monkey yells for his head to return. The deer immortal freaks out and orders two servant spirits to hold down the head and keep it from returning. Monkey tries two more times with no luck, so instead he hops up. <laughs> oh my god, I love this. <laughs> He's actually talking from the stump, which is... Ironically, if they cut high enough, probably where the throat or the voice box would be, depending on how high. So maybe that's actually even the correct place for it to come out of. Interesting. Breaks all the ropes and grows a new head. The king is so impressed, he all Grew a new head! Is the previous one still talking? That was amazing. Hey now, it's not fair to say I won just yet. Yeah, you guys, grew new heads. Offers to give them their papers right now, but Monkey says he got his head cut off, so it's only fair the Immortals do so too. So Tiger Strength Immortal gets his head cut off, but when he calls for it to return, Monkey turns one of his hairs into a dog, which runs off with the head and drops it into the moat. Unable to simply grow a new head like Monkey, Tiger Strength Immortal dies and reverts to his true form, which is a yellow tiger. Oh. Not the biggest twist, I guess? Deer Strength Immortal is outraged. Oh, so they're literally just immortal animals taking on human form. That's actually kind of cool. We must avenge our fallen brother. The challenge continues. And the reason they're getting the head back is because transformation is bullshit. And demands he try the heart removal thing. Monkey's excited because he's had a mild stomach ache and was hoping for the opportunity to clean out his spleen a little bit. One very graphic disembowelment later, Monkey's... I hope I put everything back in the right place. <laughs> he's just enjoying this. He's actually enjoying this. Oh my god. Totally fine, but when the deer strength immortal tries the same thing, Monkey turns one of his hairs into an eagle to straight up Prometheus this dude. Deer strength immortal dies for real and turns... Yeesh, some immortals. Um, yeah, apparently, and this should be a surprise to no one, they're not stronger than Monkey. And if they were wise enough to know who he was, they would never have done this. ...into a white deer. Starting to sense a pattern here. So the final immortal, Goat Strength Immortal, demands the boiled and oil thing, which Monkey is also enthused for, claiming his skin's been kinda dry lately and an oil bath might be just what he needs. Actually, so that Monkey might swims around in the boiling oil all happy-like, but when he sees Pigsy whispering something to Sandy, he thinks maybe he's laughing at him and decides to prank him back. So he turns into a tech, apparently disappearing, and they instantly declare him dead and capture his companions. Tripitaka asks for a moment to grieve his- Really, Monkey? The urge to prank someone overwhelmed the urge to prove he was right. I can't even say I disagree with his priorities, but really? ...his lost disciple and gives him a very sweet eulogy. Oh. Calling Monkey Gallant and wishing him peace. Pigsy ruins Sparkling the moment humor? by calling him an ignorant deep- You ignorant crispy fried house wrangler. I'm going to haunt you for the rest of our life. What's <laughs> for this? <laughs> I mean, it's not going to be too long. ...ride Pima Wen, and Monkey is so pissed, he turns back just to yell at him. The arresting officer freaks out and says a he must ghost. be a ghost, because otherwise he'd have made a false report by declaring him dead, and Monkey is so offended that he hauls himself out, dries himself off, gets all dressed up, and kills that guy for insinuating he might be dead. The king is all set to give him their- So, can I give you your papers? Yeah, probably smarter, because you've already pissed off the monkey papers and let him go, but Monkey insists the goat immortal take his turn in the tub. So he does, but Monkey is suspicious and tests the oil, finding it very cool to the touch. Monkey oh. reasons a cold dragon must be keeping the fire from heating the oil and contacts the northern Got all the violation of laws of thermodynamics. Dragon King about it. The Dragon King has the errant cold dragon arrested, and without that, the oil is, well, boiling. Goat immortal dies and turns into a goat. The king is all- Oh! So the last one wasn't even an immortal. He was actually the frost because others could survive it temporarily. All my immortals, dead! Then they weren't really immortal, now were they? Also, probably evil and maybe murdery, these guys usually are. He's not wrong. But the other ones actually could survive it temporarily. The last one was just flat out cheating though. All sad about all his immortals dying, but Monkey reminds him that they were all demons in disguise, not really human, and they were probably plotting to- Says the monkey demon. Just throwing it out there. Take over his kingdom or kill him or something. The king is relieved, reverse- Actually, considering they were looking for the elixir, they might have actually been holding through on their entire bet. But also with how this goes, probably not. This is policy on Buddhism and gives the gang their travel papers. So after that lengthy detour, oh, yeah, the they're horse all is set there. to continue along their journey to the west. I'll They've traveled I'll far and done great things, but there's still a long way to go. What new trials await them on their arduous adventure? Find out next time on Journey to the West. And that was Monkey showing off that he has all the immortality. And oddly enough, making it work. Yeah, Wukong is uh, having fun with that one. 
I can't believe all the just over the top amounts of immortality actually came up as a useful addition to part of the story. Normally when I get a story this old, I'm thinking, okay, it happened episodically. We're just going to move on, pretend nothing happened. Uh, so I kind of like having such an old story have things happening earlier that matter later because that is not always the case. It should be because good writing like that isn't a new concept. But there's so many times where it's just ignored. And I don't mean that recently. I don't mean that old. I mean, yes. So, yeah, hey, I'm glad that that actually came up as something useful rather than just, oh, he has immortality because he has immortality. It's he has immortality and he's going to use it in plot relevant ways. Neat. It's a small thing, but it's one of those that I actually do enjoy. So if you haven't already, you guys know the deal. There's a link below to the original video. Hit it up. I'm pretty sure we're getting close to the end of this series. And if not, cool, more to watch. And if there is, okay, well, we're getting close to the end. I'll just check out something else like Pope Fight because I've been told to do Blue's Pope Fight next. And it sounds really good. But I want to see what just to look at because there's so much. Sorry, just I love what Overly Sarcastic Productions is doing. And just finding out they have so much to get through is... It's like being a kid in a candy store, man. A video candy store with a lot of humor and sarcasm. So I'm kind of loving this. Unlike an actual candy store where I would love it and then look down at the scale and go, well, fuck all kinds of duck. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, you guys know the deal. I'll see you in the next one. And don't forget to hit up the video below because it's awesome and do it anyways. I'll see you guys then. Adios.